It's a joy to be here with Spirit Speaks with my brother, friend, father, Coral, Pete, and Eden. It's so good to see you again. I needed to talk to you today, Father. It, it really becomes one of the highlights of the week to connect here. Um, it's, it's beautiful to see you again as well. Well, we were just uh, talking before we started recording here about the fact that In the Hands of God um, started nine months ago, and it's interesting now, it's just about ready to be born. It's close. It's close. <laughs> and uh, we have the In the Hands of God um, website now. And, and as we were talking about it, I also realized that there's so much that needs to be uh, learned from each project you do. There's so many lessons you learn. And I've been learning and learning. And um, we have found that even having more in-depth conversations about what's going on with you and me and Stephen Melillo um, kind of really adds to the whole thing because it is kind of all part of the quote-unquote project, right? Most definitely. And um, you, you, just as you think that the project is full and complete, We have another discussion and it just opens up a whole new world and a whole new realm of, of understanding and, and um, light, which is a phenomenal experience. Thank you. And I also, um, I also pray that when people hear you as a father with a Benedictine um, white robe monks in South Africa, realize um, how they can relate to people and not have this image they may have of priests that might be something that's very different, um, possibly judgmental or possibly um, when they see them, they're going to relieve their guilt or the term mm -hmm. sin and so much. And I think you, um, you have such a comforting presence that um, I think it comes across and I really enjoy being able to have these conversations that are kind of communions that go into spirit and how spirit speaks through us. And, and it was interesting this morning, our, our dear brother friend, <laughs> brother Stephen Melillo, <laughs> who is very, very religious and, and um, knows his saints well, brought up a post that I found very interesting because I've been going through some challenges with kind of stormy waters and a lot of anger out there and sometimes stress that's ready to be bursting through the walls and the floodgates. And I, I, I think I shouldn't be feeling this because I had three great projects really moving along beautifully. I had a book that just came out and an audio book released, but instead I'm kind of going into overwhelm. So I didn't feel so bad when I saw Stephen's post today. And, He quoted a, a saint I'd never heard of, um, and, and, and it was an interesting quote. Do you want to read it, and we can talk a little bit about that? Sure, I've got it here. Um, it is by Saint Faustina, and it says, I know well that the greater and more beautiful the work is, the more terrible will be the storms that rage against it. And that brings up some very interesting points because yes. when we feel like we're in the grace of God or doing God's work, I mean, number one, we can't get self-righteous about it ever and it can slip in without knowing it. And so then, you know, we'll get tested and trialed, you know, and there are trials that will come up that will um, really try to get us in a way, I think, back on the proper path. And, um, and I've been going through that. And I think there's so many who are, and I wrote this this morning, actually, after reading um, that interesting quote, which kind of surprised me because sometimes we don't look at at that. We only think, okay, we're going to do what's good and not that there'll be challenges to it. Before I read my, my poem, what's your take on that, that uh, quote? So it is a very good reminder for us all that with the work that we are doing um, and the way that I see it is that we are doing light work and we are extending the light of, of God. And when you reach into new areas where there has been darkness, it takes time for that light to penetrate and that it, it's work. It's, it's not easy necessarily. So you do get 
um, resistance in whatever way that that happens. Although it is not necessarily resistance in the sense of something trying to stop you. It is like putting your hand through water. So, so you feel the layer of water and then your hand goes through. And it's, it's just that layer sometimes that we experience as negativity or people standing up against us. But it is in reaction to the, the higher vibration that we bring forth. Um, and I always try and look at the reason for that resistance. So uh, if you study neuro-linguistic programming, it tells you that the map is not a territory. So whatever you see the world as is not the world. You see the world through your own filters and your own prejudices. And so when, when we work with people who then have these almost, I want to use the words, violent reactions against us, it's not about us. And it is maybe their discomfort at the energy that we have there. But most of all, I have realized it is driven by fear. And once you can acknowledge that, and you can acknowledge that they are maybe in a space of, of anguish, of fear, and their reaction to that is aggression, then the whole picture changes. And there's been so much fear prevalent yes. in ways that um, we don't even know because when we're dealing with how we can get through storming waters, we just, sometimes for me, I go full speed ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead. And then we don't realize that, well, okay, uh, we can try to do that, but these are stormy waters and we have to have some realization that, hey, this is still stormy waters. So, so, you know, again, we're brought back to that. And I read a, and I, I'm paraphrasing here because I don't have it in front of me, the prayer of grace. But part of it that's important says, reveal what needs to be revealed. Heal what needs to be healed so that we may have the grace to have to work with God's will. And so the reveal what needs to be revealed is coming up, I think, very intensely now for me, I, maybe because I'm saying that prayer and, and with you, when you have more light, more is revealed, you know, when you have more light and shining in the darkness, you'll see things. And we yes. all have our shadow self. And sometimes the stuff we've buried for a long, long time will be revealed. I've seen this when there's long retreats or meditation groups and things will come up with people that we never would have imagined in them. You know, I've seen this mm -hmm. in Zen settings that it's like all of a sudden it gets pretty strange after two or three days, you know, I'm like, whoa, okay, this is coming up. How do you deal with it? And how do you heal it? And then how do you turn it over to God at the same time dealing with it yourself? You know, um, interesting points because, you know, I like to turn things over to God Obviously, our CD is called In the Hands of God, but that doesn't take our own responsibility out of it either. You know, yes. number one, it's his responsibility to remember to try to do God's will. But we, as servants of God, have to, at the same time, do the best we can do to enact God's will. And that's a challenge in these times. It is definitely a challenge. And uh, it's not something that we always get right um, and and it's it's I think that's that's part of our lesson is to always try and recognize that everybody has their own challenges and more than that uh, to recognize that everybody has the divinity inside of them so a practice that for me is quite beautiful is as you meet a person or as you greet a person to just silently Acknowledge to yourself, I am greeting God. I love that. And, and you know, when, you know, more and more people are bowing to the God and the other one, they do a namaste, they're recognizing the God self in them. And you have studied a keto, and I'm sure you recognize that even in the partner that you're about to go in the ring with, you know, that you do that, I'm sure, first, don't you? Yes. So Aikido, um, when you start to train with somebody, you, you bow to them and you say the words onagashimasu. 
And that means, please teach me. Wow. That's so, a fantastic follow-up to just recognizing the God in them, bound to the God in them, but please teach me. I had never heard that before. Yes. So, so you, you bow to your partner, you ask them to teach you. Even a, an instructor would bow to a complete beginner and say, please teach me, because you can learn more from a beginner than from seniors most, uh, most of the times. And um, afterwards, you bow again, and you use a very formal way. You say, uh, domo arigato gozaimashita, which means that thank you so, so very, very, very much for basically putting your hands, uh, your life into my hands. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that is so powerful. That's so beautiful. And, you know, you can learn in Tai Chi and I think probably Aikido too, that, and one of the things I remember from learning um, some, not only Tai Chi, but the basis of karate, um, if you do not give someone to push back something against, that they will push and have nothing to push against and they'll fall forward. And it's only when you have something you're pushing back against that you then can get a full blow sometimes. You know what I'm trying to say, that process of what you go through? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, the, the, the founder of Aikido, uh, Morihei Ushiba, had some beautiful sayings. So he wasn't only famous for the, the, the fact that he started Aikido, but he also had what they call doka, sayings of the way. And one of it was, if your attacker wants your hand, give him your hand, then you, then you move the universe around him. And that I have found is so powerful with people whose egos are on high alert. Um, and, and part of my nature is if I'm encountering sometimes people with big egos, I used to just try to deflect their ego by not recognizing their ego or by not feeding their ego. Yet by what you're saying, and I found is oftentimes true, it can be much more effective to recognize that this is the ego. Just as you would say, you extend their hand to them. And then once you do that, they feel like, okay, that person recognized that. I don't need to engage in that part of a, a fight um, or a battle because it's been recognized. Um, yes. And it's, it's a very wise for these times. You can learn so much in that practice I've often said Aikido and, and Tai Chi is moving meditation. Um, and it teaches you because you are in that mindset how to carry your meditation into your daily life. And with these words you're sharing, Father, I mean, those are very, very powerful. Um, I wanna shout, share the words I wrote this morning after yes. reading um, Stephen's um, wonderful quote that he shared and what I've been going through too, and what I'm seeing and sensing, I wrote the dark clouds in this life accent the coming of a new light. Amidst the struggles to get by, there are blessings we can find. We can choose to focus on the good that still survives the power of our inner strength and the reason we're alive. Through these times that are tough, we can still reach that space that is timeless in our being. And that transform, transformation that takes place, there's a shift that brings a presence that helps us when we pray. The miracles of love are our greatest saving grace. And the dark clouds part and the golden sun breaks through and it brings understanding and the compassion that renews. As we bow in deep gratitude to God and his angels that stand by and help us in these challenging times and lend a hand to you and I. Lord, help me walk way that's right oh I was going to go into the next poem and that maybe I should because yes. it was a poem and it kind of leads into that I this is from our in the hands of God and this I wrote last summer actually Lord help me walk the way that's right 
to follow your precious life, guided ever with that grace, to follow that bright inner light. Let me learn to find the time to show the kindness so in tune and sharing love so profound that it helps us to find a higher ground. Lord, let me walk the way that's right with your footsteps as my guide. Be your spirit. By your spirit, may I be healed. By the gift to forgive that sets us free. And may I share these words that come in silence from a sacred dawn. When I commune, my Lord, with thee. For yours is such pure energy and the power is so profound. All creation is embraced with that depth of love, the depth of love we find. So that's the two I, ran, I put into one here. <laughs> um, it was supposed to be just one, but it was the two, one from today and then Lord help me walk from last summer. Which has turned into one of the most beautiful songs Yes. Um, and and yeah, with a very very powerful message, um, and very interesting. Uh, we had the mass reading today was about uh, Jesus losing his temper and really? cleaning out the temple, oh. <laughs> um, where there were people selling cattle and. Um, doing uh, and and money changers, um, and Jesus went into a a holy rage, you can almost say, and he made a whip, and he chased those people out, and um, he then said he will break down the temple and in three days rebuild it, and of course, with us being in Lent, that was referring to his crucifixion and the resurrection, and. The first words of the poem just reflect you know, cleaning the space that like Jesus did in the temple and um, for us, our spiritual temples, our bodies, getting them clean. And more than that, cleaning our minds from all these thoughts of ego, um, of status and of of judgment i think that's that's a big thing is and and to me that every every one of those things creates a little stall where it tries to to sell its goods and when it's full of those things we can't live in the grace of the lord and the poem is such a powerful powerful prayer in asking the lord Please help us cleanse ourselves. And then once that happens, and again, it's not a, a once-off thing. I mean, it's, it's constant, um, not a struggle. It's a constant exploration. Mm. Uh, and once that happens and we, come, we become more and more aware of all these illegal squatters in our minds and in our temples, then the world changes the way it reacts to us. And it doesn't always react in the way that we expect it to. We've seen it these, these past couple of weeks. Um, yet when we look back, we see why. You know, that said, I, w I wonder if I can find it. I read a beautiful quote from Alan Cohen this morning. And it was so beautiful um, that said exactly what you were just saying. And it's so funny. Um, <laughs> This is by a quote from Sally Kempton. It's impossible to defeat an enemy who has an outpost in your head. Beautiful. Which is kind of what you were saying. So if you, number one, haven't someone who's an enemy and, and you let that be a battle and it gets into your mind and you are going, and you know that feeling that happens when something doesn't feel like it's right and you will have this inner dialogue back and forth trying to, um, figure it out or even try to prove to yourself that, hey, this wasn't right, you know, but that's when that outpost in your mind then takes some root. And yes. so you have to go even 
deeper to unroot that, which takes things such as light, yes, prayer, yes, forgiveness, and sometimes over and over forgiveness, <laughs> and then figuring out, you know, reveal what needs to be real. Why did that come up? What part of yourself allowed that outpost in your mind to take root? Which is, yes. is a part of the deeper practice, you know, as someone who is working with um, God and a light, um, that, that these things are things that, um, that we have to, as guardians of our own temples, um, be very, very aware of. And, and, and just by saying, clearing out those stalls, um, boy, you know, it, that, that goes so deep because, I mean, what in us in those stalls set up those stalls? We go back to where and why did we have to create that, you know? Um, and it can go very deep. It can go very yes. deep. When you go to that place, where, how do you uh, resolve and solve um, those outposts that might come up sometimes in life, in your mind? So for me, one of the biggest things um, you, you mentioned forgiveness is that there's nothing to ever forgive. So I, it's not my place to forgive anybody other than myself for, for making bad decisions uh, or, or doing things that didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. Um, so the forgiveness part, once you accept that it's not up to you to forgive, then a lot of that power goes away in the, the negativity that, that it brings with. Um, and then the stalls coming up, to me, it is an unlearning of who we are or unlearning of who we think we are. And it's not necessarily that they keep on coming back. Uh, if in my mind, it is actually our consciousness expanding mm. and then realizing, okay, there's this row of stalls that I now have to deal with and let's deal with them. And as we deal with them, our consciousness expands more. And then we see, oh, but there's another row. And sometimes some will come back in, into the middle and, and we can deal with them, but it's not just a static thing anymore. And people are responding to that beautifully. And I think a lot of people are realizing that it is an expansion of consciousness and expansion of awareness as the light grows in us, mm -hmm. if we allow it to. Um, and you can also, of course, get caught in that idea of let's see how far I can grow and then <laughs> ego comes back into play. Um, and then we, we return to ask the Lord, help me see the way that's right. And um, yeah. Well, you brought up some important points in that. And I guess I do want to address that very important point about forgiveness because um, I know it's true and yet always it's so powerful with uh, so many people are doing hono, ho, ho, ono, pono, pono. Um, you know, it is asking for forgiveness, um, but on many ways um, it works. But again, I do agree with you. We aren't necessarily forgiving others, but forgiving ourselves. And when you put it in that perspective, it takes out, again, the ego of feeling superior that you need to forgive someone else when you just need to forgive yourself. Um, and there's a lot of elements. I mean, there's so much in forgiveness. That it goes, it's a very, very deep pro, uh, process that goes on and on. And it's interesting how, you know, when we realize we're forgiving ourselves that we are, you, you look at that point, we, if we are all one, as we forgive ourselves, we are forgiving the others as well because part of our energy is part of the energy that is there as well. You know, um, when you point your finger at someone else, three fingers are pointing back at you, you know? Yes. <laughs> and, and so that, that practice is very, very deep. And um, 
And I won't even, I don't think I'll go into the guilt that some people feel being Catholics and feeling like they were born in sin, because that's another whole chapter we could do in this <laughs> book, because that goes, that goes real deep as well, doesn't it? <laughs> we, we could actually do a whole uh, a project on that. Yes. Uh, on, on guilt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so much now when you are in this process of evolvement and, and seeing consciously being aware of, of wanting to evolve and become more aware and activate that awareness, you still have to really use all the tools you have to um, clear out, you know, those stalls, you know, there's many ways to do it. And not everyone could do it with the anger that Jesus did that. Because again, we may not have the understanding to do it in the right way with our anger, you know? And, and, and there's many things we couldn't deal with in the way that it was done by Jesus, you know? Um, and that goes another deep, deep, deep subject of how do you set up boundaries and how do you correct what's wrong and make it right? except by going into your inner self and, and, and doing that inner work, right? Definitely. And um, righteous anger for man, I don't think exists. Because if you get angry in righteousness, and, and it's one of my biggest challenges is I, I get righteously angry. Um, <laughs> but that then makes me judge people. Yes. And in the same sense, if I cannot, if, if it's not up to me to forgive somebody, it's also not up to me to judge anybody. Oh, good point. Very good point. Yeah. And judgment is very prevalent in our society. And I was raised with it. I was raised in Beverly Hills High School. There were judgments and glamour and issues all around me. And it was all done again, based again with the ego. Um, and judgments are are really, really a difficult thing because that brings up separation. Mm. And when you bring up separation, you're doing the us and them thing, which again will cause people as they are evolving, they'll notice that you're doing on some subtle, subtle level that, which will get them upset as well. If you are subconsciously even judging them. They can sense that, right? Um, Most definitely. But I don't think we have the time to go into all of that today. We could, <laughs> I'm in Maui and you're in uh, South Africa and it's much later there than it is here, 12 hours time difference. So I appreciate you taking the time late at night to, to have this conversation on how spirit speaks in so many fascinating ways. Um, and especially through you, you bring up such very, very interesting points that um, give me food for thought. Um, which I will digest carefully <laughs> and consciously. As long as it doesn't give you indigestion. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure, my friend. Um, and God bless you for the work you do and for your insights. And Spirit speaks through you. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you, God. Thank you, my friend. Have a beautiful day. Aloha.